the end systolic relationship, the, the, the ESPBR, the, the slope of that has been variously described as capital E sub ES for end systolic elastins. And then and originally that was the same as the, the E, the e max. Uh, initially, uh, Suga and Sagawa, when they were developing all this, they they equated the E max with the E um, sub E S, the uh, the maximal ventricular elastance. So, um, I, in my own thinking, I tend to keep these pretty much so the same. The the maximal elastance is if you were to take a single loop and draw a point from that single loop down to the x-axis, that would be the maximal elastance for that particular loop. And that's, now that is just for a single loop. However, if, if you take several loops, as you would get here, when you do the IBC occlusion, and you are now generating a line to those, to those points, that would be the ESPBR and the maximal elastance for a series of, um, of loops. So let's look at ESPBR and try to understand it in terms of myocardial uh, mechanics, the mechanics of ventricular contraction. Many of you will be familiar, perhaps, with Langendorf preparations, isolated perfused hearts. This is something I, I have worked with a lot over the years. And typically with a Langendorf perfused heart, you would put a balloon in the left ventricle, and you would change the balloon volume of the left ventricle. And in that balloon, of course, is connected to a pressure transducer. So when the ventricle contracts, you are generating a, a ventricular developed pressure. And let's just do a little experiment here. Let's have a Langendorf perfused heart with a balloon in it, and let's increase the balloon volume a certain amount to a certain preload condition on that heart, and then the heart contracts, and it will generate a certain developed pressure, as shown at this point here. If we were to now increase the end diastolic volume by inflating that balloon, then on subsequent beats, the heart will be generating a greater pressure. And again, if we increase the preload volume on the balloon, we will get a further increase in that developed pressure. Well, those points are following along a line that is almost identical to the end systolic pressure volume relationship that we see when we do the IVC occlusions that I talked about just a, a few minutes ago. <clears throat> And in fact, Asuga and Sagawa and those people back in the 70s and 80s showed the similarity, although not necessarily identical, but similarity between isovolumetrically contracting ventricles in the generation of ESPVR and uh, those that are, that are um, uh, actually shortening and ejecting blood. But now, but now in our experiment, if we now take that heart and perfuse it, uh, with uh, a beta agonist, isoproterno or, or dobutamine, to increase the inotropy of that heart. Then at any given preload volume, we will get an enhanced increase in pressure development. And so what, we will, what this means is that the maximal de uh, developed pressure is enhanced by the application of a positive inotropic agent. And we see that this end systolic pressure volume relationship, where in, in this model is really the isovolumetric pressure that's being developed, is enhanced. The slope is increased, very similar to what we see with the ESPVR that is generated when we do IVC occlusions in, in the beating heart. And the other point to mention about this, and this will come up in subsequent slides, we're going to see that, that the ESPVR is load independent. And that's, that's a very important concept to understand. Because other measures of inotropy are, in many, in, in, in many instances, very load dependent. For example, uh, many years ago, physiologists and pharmacologists would use things such as maximal DPDT for a ventricular as an index of myocardial contractility. Well, certainly DPT, DPDT changes as you change inotropy, but it also changes when you increase or decrease the preload on the heart. So DPDT is preload dependent. 
whereas ESPBR, as we shall see, is preload independent, and it's also afterload independent.